The Eugene Johnson Show. The Eugene Johnson Show. The Eugene Johnson Show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Eugene Johnson Show. I'm Eugene Johnson with Crypto Crew. First off, I wanted to say that I'm sorry to everyone because I have been able, unable to make a video as of late. Um, I had problems with my health there at first, and then after I had problems with that, I had to go to New York a few weeks ago to finish filming a movie. So I apologize, and I also want to thank Tom Majorly for being so considerate and uh, allowing patience with me. I really appreciate that, Tom. But anyway, this week's show I'm going to try to keep short, um, and I apologize for the video quality. I had to do this on my phone because for some reason uh, my tablet, which I usually do the shows on, it's messing up for some reason. i got to figure out what's wrong with it. I've had to restart it like four or five times, so I did a completely factory reset, and it's still not letting me upload anything. So I apologize for that. Thank you all for your patience. Uh, okay, tonight's show is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to tell you a couple of stories that happened to friends of mine, and then after those, I'm going to kind of do a... Uh, informative type video to inform you guys of something that uh, recently happened to me uh, as you know it's getting close to Christmas and uh, we're get heading into a new year so things are looking very bright for this new year for me um, now that my health is straightened up and uh, I have time now since I finished the movie I should be able to do these um, shows at least once every two weeks, if that's okay with you guys, and if it's okay with Tom. But anyway, um, let's get on to the story, shall we? <clears throat> uh, the first story that uh, caught my attention was a really good friend of mine on Facebook. I'm not going to say her name uh, because she told me not to, but she told me she gave me permission to tell this story. It appears that. Uh, her and her husband, back in 1987, I believe it was, rented an apartment. They had just got married, and they wanted a place of their own. As far as I know, they were both staying with her mother at the time, but they were able to afford their first apartment, so they moved in immediately. Um, everything was fine for the first, I think she said, three weeks. And about the time three weeks rolled around, all of a sudden the TV was coming on by itself. It was changing channels by itself. Uh, water faucets were coming on. Um, <clears throat> and they were hearing re weird scratching noises on the wall and inside the wall. So, But the thing that really made them uh, vacate the area as immediately was one day they were sitting there for breakfast and uh, they had their heads bowed to uh, cut their food. And when they raised their heads, the uh, all the cabinets in the kitchen had opened by themselves. So they immediately found another place and moved in. But uh, during further research of uh, the apartment complex that they were in, it appears that the person that lived there before had committed suicide in the living room by shooting himself. And apparently, everybody who has lived there since uh, has had some kind of experience. But of course, you know, a lot of people don't want to tell about their experience, afraid of being scrutinized or anything else, you know, which, uh, you know, uh, me firsthand, um, if anybody out there has a story for me, I'm not going to scrutinize you. I'm not going to judge you. I don't do that. And uh, in my previous uh, shows, I give my email address, which is hulk18227 at yahoo.com. And if any of you guys have a story or an eyewitness account, you can email me and let me know how I can get in touch with you further. And I'll be happy to uh, tell your story. I won't mention your name if you don't want it mentioned. So, anyway, on to the next story. 
this story happened to a, another good friend of mine over Facebook. Uh, his name is Lino, and uh, me and him's the same age. Uh, you know, we talked on Facebook many, many times. Uh, we've actually we actually text each other a lot. I've called him a few times, and he's a real good, nice guy. And uh, as a matter of fact, this the reason I'm telling this is because it happened around Christmas. Lino lives in California, and uh, apparently one year he was about 10 years old. He wanted a uh, remote control boat because he lives next to the ocean. So his parents got him the remote control boat for Christmas, and he was very excited and wanted to try it out as soon as possible. So he went outside to try his boat, and uh, somewhere along the line he was running up and down the shoreline and uh he said that he reached this certain spot and uh looked out into the horizon and he said he's seen a small flat like craft uh come up out of the ocean and according to Lino it sat there and hovered for about two or three minutes long enough for him to run in and get his parents and his parents came out and they also witnessed it too uh, he said it stayed there for about two or three minutes, about a minute after he went and got his parents. And they all stood there looking, and according to him, they uh, saw a lot of bright lights on the craft, and it started to spin really fast. And he said with a like a snapping loud sound, the craft took up and went straight up in the air with a streak of light and a snapping sound so you know this is the first time he ever you know told this story to anybody which is again like i said understandable because of the judgment and everything else that people do um but i've talked to him about it and he said that it was one of the most frightening experiences that he ever had being a youngster he says he still remembers it till this day and he'll never forget it. And he said his parents still don't talk about it much. So, two little quick stories this this show. But I promise in a couple of weeks, um, I'll be doing more. Uh, as a matter of fact, my buddy that I've told you all about named Matthew. He actually granted me permission to interview him on some of the things that he and I and he and my uncle experienced. Um, we've actually experienced a lot of the paranormal together. Uh, he's been a family friend for many, many years, ever since I was little. And uh, he and my uncle were best friends. And later on, we became best friends. So uh, I trust him wholeheartedly. He's somebody that uh, I would always trust. He's not a person to stab you in the back. He's not a person to lie. So I will be interviewing him very soon, and also I'm planning a trip to uh, uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia. That's coming up very soon. I'm planning it, and we're going to check out uh, the Mothman statue and check out the bridge. It's been a long time coming because i come to find out that Point Pleasant, West Virginia is about two hours from me. So it's a quick little ride. Um, I mean, it won't take long at all. And maybe I'll do a live, well, maybe I'll record a show up there. And also, <clears throat> um, uh, about a year or two ago, uh, I was actually at a place called uh, Lilydale. Lilydale, New York. I don't know if any of you have heard of it, but it's actually a spiritual gated community. Um, it's a organized religion, uh, establishment where you can be any religion and stay there. And it's a very tranquil, very peaceful, very beautiful land, but it is extremely haunted. Uh, there are psychics there. Uh, they have all kinds of stuff dealing with ghosts and everything like that. I actually have pictures, which I'm going to have to get in touch with Tom. But I have uh, pictures that maybe the next show he can uh, edit into the video as I talk about it. But that's that's uh, going to be 
in a couple weeks. I hope you guys stay tuned for that because I did uh, snap a couple of uh, pretty interesting pictures with my phone. Um, but that's coming up in a couple of weeks. But now on to something that's uh, been bugging me a little bit. <clears throat> As you know, it's Christmas time and I went to the uh, store a few weeks ago. And, you know, doing Christmas shopping and everything. And this lady was in one of the aisles. And I noticed a very peculiar object in her uh, cart. And it caught my attention immediately. And uh, I struck up a conversation with her about it. She was an elderly woman. And she uh, did not know exactly what she was getting. So I informed her what she was getting. And I told her that it was very dangerous. And what I'm talking about is she had one of these in her cart. Um, yes, I own one. I've owned one for a while. Um, but there's a big difference on whether you know how to use it or not. That's the key point here. Um, it's really, really disturbing that, uh, big stores, you know, around the country are selling these things in the board game aisle. Um, I cannot stress enough for anybody that knows anything about these. They are extremely, extremely dangerous. Um, they sell them now in glow-in-the-dark form. And, I mean, it, all over the box. There's no warnings. There's nothing. It just says, you know, uh, it's a game. And it's not a game. I, I assure you it's not a game. Um... The Ouija board has been around for centuries. It has been used as a tool for contacting the dead. Um, but you don't always contact the dead with them. Uh, demonic forces can uh, pretend to be your relatives that you want to talk to. Uh, they can, you know, uh, trick you into believing anything they want you to believe. Um, that's why I say the Ouija boards are extremely dangerous. And I mean, looking at the box right now, it says ages eight to adult and it's not appropriate for any child. And, uh, it turned out the elderly woman was actually buying that as a Christmas gift for her 11 year old, uh, grandson, which luckily I talked her out of. Because apparently he had been watching some kind of TV show. Very popular TV show. I'm not going to say the name of it. But it's about two brothers. And uh, who, you know, uh, go ghost hunting and all that stuff. And they fight demons and are friends with demons and all that stuff. But I'm telling you uh, from experience, you don't ever, ever, ever want to give a child an Ouija board. Uh, an Ouija board is, in a, is a portal. It uh, can lead to either good things or bad things. But uh, yes, I own one, but I've never used it in my house, nor will I ever use it in my house, because it can open up a horrible doorway to any kind of entity that wants to attach itself to you or your family. So I implore you Hopefully you see this video, uh, take it from me, do not buy your children an Ouija board for Christmas. It's extremely dangerous. If they don't know what they're doing, they can summon some of the worst things that you could imagine. Also, a lot of books, if they want books with like magic spells or incantations or anything of that nature, those, those can also open up doorways and summon demonic forces that can hurt you, can <clears throat> take possession of your soul. Um, and once that happens, it's very, very hard to uh, get them unattached from you. Um, sometimes it can even lead into death. As a matter of fact, one of the most famous cases was in Missouri of a 13-year-old boy whose aunt taught him how to use an Ouija board, and his story became the basis for The Exorcist. Uh, he was 13, he got 
uh, possessed, and uh, it was one of the most documented cases in history. Uh, you can Google it. Uh, I don't know the boy's name. I don't think they ever released his name. But, uh, yes, he was possessed, and uh, they had a very hard time uh, with the exorcism. And one, I think she was French, one girl was 16. She was also messing around with books and uh, Ouija boards, and she also got possessed. But uh, uh, horribly, she passed away from being uh, possessed. Uh, she had malnutrition and everything like that, and it cost her her life. So, like I said, anything to do with the Ouija boards or the occult or anything else, if you don't know what you're doing, they're extremely dangerous. And like I said, I would not recommend anything like that for a child. So, hopefully this little message gets through to some people that you should never uh, get any of your children any kind of things like that. They're very dangerous. But anyway, uh, this has been the show for... Tonight, in a couple weeks, like I said, I've got interviews coming up with people. I've got trips planned. Also, Bobby Mackey's is still on the list to, to travel to. So, you guys stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for the next show in a couple weeks. Again, I appreciate you guys being so patient. I want to wish everybody a safe and joyful Merry Christmas and an amazing New Year. Uh, until then, this is Eugene Johnson saying goodbye. <laughs> Очень нас важнее жить. Очень нас важнее жить. Очень нас важнее жить.